Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and this series on Flutter and Firebase authentication. And we've just been doing some real quick videos with some uh, kind of basic concepts on working with Firebase authentication in Flutter. And I did a video on the uh, email and password login, and this is what we got. And I'll put the repo down below if you want to uh, to build that yourself. But it's really simple. It's just a text field for email, a text field for password. Uh, and then we have two buttons, one that, that calls the sign up with email and password. So that's this one on the right. And then the other calls the sign in. Uh, with email and password. But of course, we had no error trapping on that. So if I go ahead and try to sign in with these credentials here, I get in. But if I also come back and put in the same information, and I try to sign up, then I get an error here in my uh, debugging console, but the user gets nothing. And so uh, many of you asked, how can we actually show a meaningful error to the user? And so that's what we're going to cover in this one. So the uh, app has two screens. Uh, we have a home page and we have a login page. So we're on the login page. We're trying to get to the home page. And in each one of these buttons, we have an on press method. One calls sign in with email and password and the other calls create user with email and password. And so to, to trap the error, uh, we're going to actually want to move this to its own function uh, so that we can run a try catch block and we can run async code. It'll just be a lot cleaner that way. So I'm going to come down below the build. So inside the last curly brace, and I'm going to build two methods. So we're going to build a function for sign in, and we will pass in our email as a string and we will pass in our password as a string and so we want to make use of async await so we'll go ahead and add the async keyword and we're going to wrap the whole thing in a try catch block and so let's go ahead and do what we have up here, which is to auth.sign in with email and password. In fact, we can grab that. All right, and instead of using the dot then, we're going to await that. And so if that's successful, then we're going to continue in the block. And if it's not, then it's going to fall out to the catch block. And so once we're down here, we can assume success. So at this point, we can navigate to our home page. So we can do navigator of context. Uh, we'll push replacement and material page route builder context, all this good stuff. And at this point, we can go to the home screen. All right, so that's our success case. And we'll keep this keep the space. All right, and then we want the catch block. And so we want to we want to catch a specific kind of error, and that is our Firebase auth exception. So we're going to say on Firebase auth exception catch error open up our curly braces and here we can print error and the really nice thing about a firebase auth exception is it, it is going to give you a nice detailed message that you don't mind necessarily turning around and presenting to the user it's it's written in plain language it's not some garbly gook that you would want to filter out and the user not see And that's all. So I think it would actually be better. We don't, I mean, printing would be fine for us as the developer, but let's go ahead and follow through uh, and actually present this to the user. Uh, we could put a snack bar here 
I'd rather run headfirst in, into a brick wall than work with Flutter snack bar. It's, it's just painful. Uh, so I think what I'll do is stop this, and I'm going to bring in Flutter Toast. So I'll go to pub.dev, I'll search Flutter Toast, I'll go to the Installing tab, I will right-click on Flutter Toast, I will bring that into my pubspec.yaml file, and I will paste it right after Firebase off. And I'll run pub.get. And then I'm going to restart that. And while that restarts, I think I'll come in here and replace my print error with a flutter toast. Show toast. And my message, I'm just going to go ahead and pass out error dot message and because when we have the app running we have the keyboard at the bottom and this defaults to the bottom uh, it kind of gets lost in the keyboard so I'm gonna move the gravity property which is the location to toast gravity top Okay, and so sign up is basically going to be the same thing. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it. And we'll say sign up. And we're just going to change the auth function to create user with email and password like that. And same thing if it's successful, we want to get to our navigator. And if it's not, we'll go ahead and show that error to the user through the toast. And so those are all set. We just need to come up here and hook them to our buttons. So on our sign in button, I am going to take out all the curly braces and just replace it with an arrow function that goes to sign in. And we can pass the email and password just like that. So that was good. And this will be sign up. All right, so now let me try that. So I have uh, an account already. So it shouldn't let me sign up again with that same account. All right, so now I can see this email address is already in use, and we can actually make that toast longer if we want to, uh, but that's not the point of this. In use by another account, and that is uh, absolutely true. So if I go to sign in, now if I try to sign in with gobbledygook, we have no validation on this. That's going to have to be a future video. The email address is badly formatted. Um, I I think if you, I think you need a minimum of six characters for your password. So let's try a password that's too short. And we actually get a very meaningful message there that the password should be at least six, six characters. All right. All right, so hopefully that's helpful. A lot of you asked for this particular video on uh, trapping the errors that you are getting out of uh, Firebase authentication. You get back good messages that you can show to the users. So uh, once you have them trapped, it's it's a, it's a pretty easy process to turn those around. You don't have to kind of filter them and uh, edit the language and, and kind of customize the message. It's, it's all there for you. So hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you in a future video.